welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing an oil change on my 2014 Can-Am Commander. And I'm going to assume that nobody has even touched their Can-Am. Nobody's even looked at how to change oil in their Can-Am. This video is for the absolute beginner. And for all of you who say I talk too much and I'm not quick enough with getting to my explanations, this part's for you. Just kidding. All right, well, now that we got that out of the way, here's the thing. We're gonna warm up the engine oil first. So I have the machine outside sitting there idling. I'm not gonna idle it until it's baking hot and, and I can't touch anything, but we do wanna get the engine oil a little warm and uh, we do wanna get it you know, flowing a little freer because when it's cold, it's a little thicker. So let's get that thing into the shop. It's been outside idling now for about five minutes. Get it in and then we'll start this video. so super simple start we're going to start by removing the passenger seat because that's how we're going to access the oil filter and the actual oil dipstick passenger seat comes out by there's a little lever down at the bottom here you just pull forward on the lever and you pull forward on the seat so as the seat comes up there's just a little tube in the front you're just going to wiggle the seat backwards and lift it out and walk away with it The dog's trying to help, but he's not much help. All right, so now we can see that we have access to our actual oil filter. The, uh, not the oil filter itself, but the drain dipstick tube or the dipstick right there. And then over here we have one retainer, two retainers, three retainers, four, five, six, seven. And what else we got here? Another couple down here, I believe, eight. 9, 10, and 11, and 12. I believe that's all of them. So all those have to come out. And what we're going to do next is we're going to remove this side panel first. So up here we have one, two, three, four there. And like I said, a few down here. I'm missing one back there. Oh, that's where that went. So we're going to start by removing these guys right here. So show myself personally, I use one of these guys right here. And it's a little hook on a... On a screwdriver handle these are very simple you just simply go inside pull out I can just get this in there like that and that centerpiece pops out like so and once that centerpiece pops out you can grab the base and wiggle the whole thing right out like that so we got a few more of those to do and we're gonna get this side cover off everything apart everything we need to get apart to access the the actual oil filter cover which is right here so that's great so first what we're going to do is we're going to before we remove the oil filter I'm just going to remove the oil dipstick first and we'll set that aside all right so we got the oil dipstick removed so now I'm just going to change camera angles and I'll show you guys down here what we're working with again there's many differing opinions about removing the oil dipstick before you actually go ahead and remove the drain plug in the bottom of the oil. And my dog's eating rocks. The reason why I remove it is simple. It's just to aerate the crankcase so that the oil comes out a little quicker 
and I don't get the kabluk, 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 the oil coming out the bottom, but it's just the way I do it. So head underneath. My dog would stop eating rocks. So let's head underneath and uh, take that oil filter. So let's head underneath, take that oil drain plug out and drain that oil. All right, so I want to try and index this for you guys so that you can see where the oil drain plug is. So as you can see the interior here, and then we come down here and we're gonna pass the, get on my way. So we're gonna pass the dog right here, get under, ugh, get under the machine. So I already got my drain bucket there. You can see we're under the machine and it's this big hole right here. So we get up there a little closer for you guys. So we have this big hole right here. So you notice there's another one just off to this side that's to drain the transmission. We don't want to do that. We're going to be draining this one right here. <laughs> this one right here. And the dog's sniffing my b right here. All right. I think we got that now. Again, we're just going to come out. And that's where we are. So it's just underneath there. Okay, so all I have to drain this, all we need to remove the drain plug is I have a 17 mil socket, 3 eighths uh, ratchet with a short extension. And we'll just let that drain. All right, so as that's draining, two things I'd like to just talk about quickly is one, the drain plug. This is the drain plug. So we're going to make sure it's clean. Now it should have this washer on there. This washer should be replaced when doing an oil change. I do not have one. Uh, it is aluminum or a softer metal. So I am going to reuse it fully confident in the fact that it's going to seal. And this is our drain plug right here. And the middle of the drain plug really cool is there's a magnet. So what it, the magnet uh, does, it picks up all any kind of metal debris that might be floating around the engine that your oil filter missed. And it'll stick to this little magnet here. So this looks nice and clean. I don't see any metal debris on there. So we're just going to give that a quick little clean. I'm just going to spray some uh, brake cleaner fluid in there to clean that up. And next we're going to talk about the engine oil dipstick. When we're filling it later on, and uh, I'll talk about it now since it's, I have it out and it's accessible. And I'll flip it around here. All right, so here on the oil dipstick we have a min and a max. And you're going to see there's some cross hatching in the center. And there's three lines. So as long as the oil is anywhere in this cross hatch uh, during operation of the vehicle in between oil changes, you're, you know, you're perfectly good to run. Uh, if it drops below the minimum level, that's when you should be adding oil. Uh, I like to fill it. This uh, particular engine takes two liters of oil and I'm going to fill it until I get to the top or near the max line up there because that's where I like to have mine because I'm lazy at checking it. So I like to have mine pretty full. So that's your dipstick, oil drain plug, oil drain plug gasket. And we're going to make sure that this is nice and clean. And also before I put the drain plug back on, I'm gonna wipe the drain plug surface to make sure there's no sand, gravel, debris, leaves, uh, dogs stuck up there. Okay, so as that oil is continuing to drain, we're just going to Clean this area up right here just real quick so there's no debris or anything that can fall in there. And then what I'm going to do, because I'm going to lose some oil, I'm just going to stick this rag underneath here like that. Just to maybe grab any oil that comes out. All right, oil filter housing bolt, 8 millimeter, Three bolts. So we still have our drain plug undone. As soon as I take this cap off, it allows more air to enter and we just drained whatever oil was in here just fell into the pan. I actually heard it drip back in, actually heard it dripping into the pan. So you can see why I had the rag here, just to collect any uh, residual oil that might pop out of there. 
And here we have our oil filter. Like so. And that is the oil filter. Oh, and that's still full oil. So that's really messy. Ah, uh, yuck. Oh, boy. All right, that's why we got a rag there. All right, so I'm just going to give this a little wipe right here, just around the mating surface here before I stick this new one back in. So the oil filter only goes in the one way. Make sure you note that. Okay, well, one thing I'm never going to do is lie to you guys on this channel and edit stuff so that it looks like everything goes really good. So I'll tell you a little secret. Things don't always go really well for him on this channel. We have an issue. This is the Wix filter that I picked up for this uh, bike. It was the cross reference for the Can Am. It was the cross reference for the Can Am one that was coming out of it. And um, so what I've done is you can't eat the filter, bud. Go away. So what I did notice is. So what I've noticed is there is a actual different height and the problem was I couldn't get the cap on and the reason why I noticed I couldn't get the cap on was because the cap does not fit correctly on the top of that Wix filter. So that Wix filter that was the cross reference for that uh, for the BRP or the Bombardier filter did not fit. So. I like Wix filters, that's why I decided to go with the Wix. I put them on everything I own unless it's an AC Delco, unless I can get the AC Delco for it. So uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, put a stop to this tonight. Luckily I don't have to use it tomorrow so I can pick one up tomorrow. And uh, hit up the dealer tomorrow and get the correct filter for it. So it's going to be a day for me, but seconds for you guys. And we're back couple days later yeah a couple days because last night was Friday and I had things to do so I didn't get back at it but we went to uh, one of my favorite places to shop is Royal Distributing and I picked up another oil filter and one thing I did notice is that uh, I had the correct oil filter to start off with and the only problem with the oil filter that I had was that I thought it was too large to fit into the actual housing Turns out it wasn't. Um, turns out I just had to apply a little bit of pressure to seat it and it fits perfectly fine. And when I match it up to the other one, it's almost bang on. So seeing as how I have the Wix and that's the one I wanted to use and not so much the Wolf Tech filter because I couldn't get to the dealer yesterday, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Wix filter. So we're going back to the machine and uh, pick up where we left off. Come on. All right, so right out of the service manual, they do recommend that you oil this. So I've just taken a little bit of the oil from inside there, wiped up this guy inside, and I guess it's so that it mates correctly inside. And then we're going to oil up this outside ring right here. There we go. Once we have that done, now we're always looking inside of the bore for debris or any garbage that might be in there. It's nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead. We popped our filter into our cap like so, and we're going to reinstall it. And it should just slide on there nicely. And there we go. Popped right in there. Now we're going to reinstall the screws and we're going to tighten it up. These ratchets are absolute crap. Like, I mean, crap. This was an expensive kit. It's a Stanley kit. And every time, I mean, watch this. So as I'm tightening, watch this little lever there. It reverses on you as you're tightening. Like, guys, it's done that since it's been new. And every ratchet does it, the three eighths, the quarter, like, what is up with that? All right, so I'm not tightening the bolts yet. I'm just snugging them, and I'm going to explain to you guys why in a second. Now it needs a bit more room. Okay, so we're going to talk about the torque a little bit here. 
So what they're actually suggesting is 10 Newton meters uh, plus one Newton meter once they're all tight, or that's 89 inch pounds plus nine inch pounds. I don't have a torque wrench, either quarter or three eighths that goes that low. So we're just gonna make sure that we're just snug on them. So I'm just gonna snug, snug. And this one needs an extension snug and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choke up on my actual 3 8 ratchet like this so if I'm holding it on the end on this side I can put an awful lot of force or a lot of awful lot of torque which I don't want to do so I'm just going to choke up on my ratchet and just snug it down so that I don't over tighten there we go and I am comfortable with that that seems perfect. Now we're going to go to fill the engine oil. All right, you guys following so far? This is for the newbies. So this is pretty simple so far. I haven't done anything scary uh, that I can think of. So now that we got the oil filter in and we got the three bolts tightened, we oiled the filter on the back, we oiled the seal on the outside. Uh, now we're just going to jump underneath. I'm going to put that drain plug back in because it's been out for three days, so I'm guessing it's empty. Going to put that back in, simple, uh, drive that up there. I can give you guys the torque spec for that and uh, come back on top and then I'm going to show you how to fill it. All right, so we got that drain plug back in, 22 foot pounds on the drain plug <clears throat> or snug until you feel comfortable. I, I, I like snug. All right, so this little engine only takes two liters of oil. I, uh, still a little bit mind boggling, it only takes two liters. So I have a 5W40 synthetic oil right here. We're going to be putting this in there today, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. All right, so to do this, because that's such a big jug of oil, I've gone ahead and filled one single liter, and then I have this funnel with a long tube on it. I'm going to stick that in there and pour some oil in. All right, so we're safe to do the full liter on this one. Oh, and I guess it helps if you open the valve on your drain. There we go. So we're filling it through the drain. Sorry. We're filling it through the... Um, what do you call that thing? We're filling our oil through the dipstick tube. All right, so that's one liter. I'm going to go fill this back up. All right, so right off the bat, I'm not going to dump the full two liters in. I'm going to dump about a liter and three quarter. And the reason for that is I don't want to overfill it. So whatever oil was left inside of the crankcase, sometimes you get a little bit of oil left. And we don't want to overfill it. So I'm going to leave myself. This is drained for a couple days, so it's probably pretty empty. So I'm going to leave myself about just under a quarter liter in here. I'm going to let that finish draining. Nice. So I'll put this aside. I'm just going to leave this funnel there for a second. All right, so I did check the oil level, and it was low. So before I even started the machine to circulate the oil into the oil filter housing and stuff, I added the rest of the two liters. So I got the full two liters in there. I'm just going to put this aside. And we're going to recheck, remember this, the hash marks. So we're going to recheck our oil level. And again, guys, this is before I'm even starting it. Once I start it and the oil starts to circulate, this level is going to drop. So to check your oil level, you thread your dipstick all the way in. And we'll pull it out. And you'll see the wet marks. So right now I am at... If you guys can see that, I am at the top of the hash mark. So that is the full lead, two liters that's in there right now. And I suspect once I start it and the oil circulates, it is going to drop a touch. Because remember when we took the oil filter out, that whole housing emptied of oil. The whole housing in there, that probably holds a good quarter liter or so. All right, let's get this thing started up. Start it up for uh, 20, 30 seconds, and then we are going to recheck the oil level.
right, there we go. We ran the machine for what, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And we're gonna recheck the oil here. So you pull your dipstick, you wipe it, and you put it back in. Thread it all the way down. Pull it back out, check the level, all right. I'm going to show you guys what happens when you run the engine. So as you know, we were at the top of the hash marks. And now we are, after we run it a bit, we are on the low side of the hash marks. Now the reason for this is when I was filling these, I may not have filled them up completely to two liters. So we are going to add oil now until we get it near the top of the max mark. So I'm going to start with just under a quarter liter. And then we'll fire the machine back up and check it again. So we're going to recheck the oil, wipe, slide that back in, pull that out. So now we are, we are still low. We're almost in the half section now. So I think what I'm going to do is the reason why I didn't put anything back together right now is because I just want to keep everything apart so we can check for leaks. So we're checking the oil filter housing where we put the oil filter after it's run for a couple minutes. So I'm going to let it run. I'm going to warm it up, let that oil start to, to move really well. And uh, then I'll check that again after that. All right, friends. So guess what? I've heated it up until the actual cooling fan comes on. And you just saw me check the oil filter housing for leaks. No leaks there. Underneath is nice and dry. The plug's nice and dry. So I'm confident now that it's been up to operating temperature. You can hear it ticking away, I'm sure, that uh, we are good. We have no leaks. Now I'm going to pull the dipstick one last time. I'm just going to double check that actual level. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's probably pretty hard to see. But we are at the full mark right here. And that is exactly where I wanted it. Not over full, not under full. In the save zone, top of the save zone. And uh, that allows for the engine to burn a little bit of oil because every four stroke uh, turner combustion engine does use oil. I mean, the rings can't bring it all down. So that is it. That is the oil change on your Canon Commander. Put everything back together. It's just the reverse, you know? So was that easy or what? What did I just witness? I also like to take these opportunities when I have the machine interior apart, check everything over. I check all the hoses, I check the wires. I'm looking for rub throughs. Manufacturers of these off-road utility machines, they just, they probably try their best, but sometimes they just don't get it. I mean, wires are rubbing through on plastic pieces. Hoses are getting, you know, there's abrasion on hoses and this one in particular, one of my spark plug wires is rubbing on the bracket for the, uh, for the top of the engine mount. So it's rubbing, which means eventually it's gonna rub through and eventually it's gonna fail. I'm gonna have to replace it. So I'm gonna look after that right now with some abrasion tape. And besides that, everything looked really good. So you know what? I'm gonna give it to my buddy for the sign off. Thank you. And I'm surprised you got it done properly. You'll need a screwdriver, flat screwdriver, or a trim removing tool, like so. 17 millimeter socket, 3 8 extension, 3 8 ratchet, and an 8 millimeter socket. And that's it. And if this guy's doing it, a whole lot of luck. 
anyway thank you so much guys for watching i really hope this video i think it was pretty comprehensive pretty full of information i really hope it helped you guys out no need to be fearful about doing this kind of stuff at home yourself as you can see very little tools required just a little bit of common sense and uh follow a video like like you just did now i'm hoping so again if you really like this kind of stuff uh, you know what G give it a like drop me a comment down below if something you didn't like or if i moved along too fast or if you have a question about something uh, i'm always here to answer your questions and uh, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time